Hey guys, Tim here. We're going to do a how-to video on how to build an MATX computer. We're going to use the uh, Silverstone uh, Sugo SG-09, uh, one of their brand new cases. It's got some pretty unique features in a very small, almost you could say an ITX size case with support for an MATX board, which is fantastic. Uh, we're going to put a liquid cooler on the back here so I'm gonna go ahead and take off uh, the fan here if you wanna see my video um, on how to take apart this case it is quite unique um, there are a few steps you need to follow uh, you can check out my unboxing video or at the end of this I will um, put it back together I'm gonna try to do these in you know, less than 10 minute uh, quick videos. Um, there might be, you know, three or four parts that I do over a few days, but I feel like, you know, for a good how to video, you don't want to sit there and watch me, you know, screw on a machine for 30 minutes. You know, I can consolidate this down to some easy steps for whether you're advanced or a beginner. You know, I think everybody should take the time uh, once in their life, especially if you use a computer on a regular basis. You know, I think you everybody should take the time once to build a computer, understand how they work. Um, you know, it's only going to, especially if you're younger, you know, you're a computer gamer, you like doing this kind of stuff, you want to get into the field someday, really learn the hardware. You know, that may not be your long-term goal, you may want to be a developer, or a game designer, but the more you know about hardware, the more valuable you are to any company that wants to hire you. So we've got that fan removed. Um, this board has eight standoffs that are required. So there's three across the top, three across the middle, and then two offset. There's one down low here, and one we're going to need to do is the bottom two. It's the bottom one of these two. So if you're using an ITX board, you use that one. For an MATX board, you use the bottom one. And one tip that I like to do is when you find the standoff, find the screws that came with the case that are for the motherboard and make sure they work together. Um, I wouldn't say that you know Silverstone would do something like include screws that would be too big, but I have seen it happen where cases um, the motherboard screws are actually too big for the standoffs that they provide. So I just believe in hand tightening these. I'll try to stay out of your guys' way even though you won't be able to see what I'm up to down here. Um, I'm just screwing it into the case. They don't need to be super tight. Uh, if you need to, some cases come with a little tool. Um, or you can just use you know, a pair of needle nose pliers or just regular pliers. Um, I wouldn't over tighten this if you ever need to take it back out. Um, you don't want it to bind. So the first step we're going to do in installing this board after we make sure we have the correct uh, posts in the case, um, which is really important. You want to make sure you read the manual because those posts, if they're in the wrong spot, can actually short out your motherboard. And if you know you buy a higher end board, you're not going to be covered under warranty if you short it out like that. Um, the first thing you do that I forget to do at least once every 10 or 15 builds is put in the I.O. backplate. I know that sounds silly, but if you forget to put this in, you're going to be taking out the motherboard. So it's really easy. I always start, um, you know, put a corner in and then kind of rock it in. They're retention held. So it's just tension that's going to hold this in. So you got to kind of, you know, wiggle it in there and get it to snap in. There it goes, it clicks in. And now we're ready to put in the board. So we're going to be using the Asus uh, P8Z77M Pro. Uh, I have the bigger brother of this board, the P8Z77-V uh, Deluxe in my main case. I love these boards, I love Asus. Um, you know, I like MSI and Gigabyte as well, but Asus has been lucky for me, I guess you could say. 
I've always had good luck with their motherboards and their products. Um, you know, your mileage may vary, but I love their stuff and I like blue and black. So all of their stuff right now is blue and black. So the easiest way I've found, personally, for me, to put things in a case, and it's going to be a little awkward here, trying not to block your view as I do this on camera, is I like to hold it by the components and then by the 24 pin or the RAM. So you don't, you never want to touch the PCB on a motherboard. Um, I know you guys can see it. I'm holding it. I'm actually putting my fingers on the the traces or on the traces on the solder. So you know, I'm not getting my fingerprints on the PCB. If you get your fingerprints on PCBs, um, you can static shot chips. You can etch the PCB with the oil on your hands, um, and you just basically shorten the life of your computer. Um, one thing I will say right now is I've already applied the back plate for the cooler I'm going to put on this later and I'll talk about that a little when we get there. The nice thing is this does have a back plate cutout for such a small case um, that's pretty exceptional. So we're going to go ahead and try to get this board in here and not block your guys' view of everything. So I'm going to hold it this way and you want to go down and into, excuse my head if it gets in your guys' way, but I always try to you know, sit it down gently, and then this is a pretty tight case, so excuse my head, I'm going to poke my head in there and make sure I'm getting it lined up correctly. And in this situation, you know, you just try to push the board flat in and get it to seat everywhere as much as possible in the the retention or in the uh, the back bracket there we go and now you'll well hopefully you'll be able to see I'll zoom in here a little that uh, the holes now line up I apologize if that was kind of blurry and awkward motion, but all of the screw holes now line up. I'm a big proponent of not using magnetized tips. If you're really careful, I mean really careful, and you really know what you're doing, you can use a magnetized tip to screw in screws on a motherboard. I personally never would because if your hand slips and touches a component, especially a component that has like, um, you know, some code on it, some built in code, you're not going to be happy. The board's going to be flaky, it might fail completely. Um, so I just never recommend it. I always just say, you know, do the best you can. How I do it is I hold my finger on the, the uh, screw. And I try to hold it, you know, so that the screw's a little exposed. And then I come in, you know, at a flatter angle than normal. So I'll use um, the middle one here. So I sit it down in, and then tip it straight up. And see, even that, I didn't get it straight on. So this does take some practice. Um, if the board isn't perfectly lined up, this is actually probably the hardest screw hole. Oops. The hardest screw hole to start on. There we go. So you're going to notice that the um, the board wants to push out of the the back bracket a little always like on most motherboards. Um, so you kind of have to hold it in with a little bit of pressure. So now when you're tightening down motherboard screws, um, don't over tighten. Once you get to where it's, you know, not wiggling, like the board doesn't wiggle, just stop. You know, don't over tighten. It's not worth, um, you know, breaking the PCB on the board. Um, you know, you just want it to where, um, you know, the board is secure. It's not going to wiggle around when you plug um, PCIe, you know, cards into it, that the cards are going to be okay. Um, you know, you want it to be supported, but not, you know, bolted down. Uh, it's actually the easiest way that most people damage their motherboards is over-tightening the motherboard screws. 
So we're going to finish up the screws real quick here. Um, one suggestion I will make also is the longer the screwdriver, especially um, in a case uh, that's tight, uh, the longer the screwdriver you have, the easier it is um, to screw things in at a straight angle. Uh, it seems silly, but if you have the screw in, you know, cross-threaded, you can cross-thread um, motherboard screws. It is a complete nightmare to try to get them back out. I've had it happen twice in my life, and it was one of the most horrible experiences I've ever had. Because there's no good way, you know, if you strip it, if it breaks, if it, if it binds, um, you're pretty much never taking the motherboard out, or you're gonna break, you know, you're gonna break, have to break the motherboard to get it out of there. Um, so in both cases, I just wound up never taking the motherboards out again, which, you know, not the end of the world if you plan to keep the PC. Um, but if you ever wanted to reuse the case for another build, that's, you know, you're kind of at the, the end of your, your rope there, so to speak. And the last thing we're going to do as part of this build video, um, I always like to put in the RAM first. Um, it makes it a little harder to plug in the 24 pin. But I like to know, you know, especially if you have like taller RAM, we're using some Kingston uh, HyperX DDR3 RAM, which is actually, you know, not bad for, for profile height. But, you know, if you're using like some Corsair Dominator or something that has a big heat spreader on it, um, I find it really good to have this in before you put in any other components or hard drives or anything. Um, because these have to be in the board, the hard drives don't necessarily have to be where you're putting them. So the easiest way. Um, to put in and in this board um, I've looked at the the manual and the blue sockets are the sockets you populate first we're only going to put in two dims today so you want to find the notch and you're going to in this board you seat one end of the ram and then gently start the other side and then once you get it down in, you want to apply firm pressure on both sides. You hear a click and it's in. So again, find the groove. Line it up with the motherboard. Make sure you're putting these in the right slots. On this board, this, this back one doesn't come unclipped. So you push it down in there. You get the other side started. Make sure that side's in and then clip it down. So we're going to stop there for today. Um, the next video will be installing the CPU, installing the uh, water cooler and the power supply. And then the final video will be hard drives and cabling and any other you know loose ends we may have. Uh, I do want to follow up real quick. The, uh, the unboxing I did, I didn't know what these two brackets were for. It turns out they're actually to adapt this 180 millimeter fan on the top down to a 140 if you want to. Why you'd want to, I don't know. Um, it's awesome that Silverstone puts them in there, don't get me wrong. The flexibility is always better. But this 180 millimeter fan is an extremely high quality fan. It's an air penetrator fan. And it actually blows some down the back of the motherboard. Now, why does this matter if you're overclocking? Cooling on both sides of the board is going to get you more stable overclocks. The more you can cool a board, the better off you're going to be. The other thing that's awesome about this case and how the fan is set up is that you're going to pull air right across the top VRM. So you're going to get nice cooling across the power for the board. And, you know, you actually get, I don't know if you guys can see, you do get a little bit where the RAM is. Um, not a lot. Uh, I don't tend to overclock my RAM as much as I overclock my CPUs. Um, I find that you know when you when you get into some of the higher overclocks for RAM, I think the stability gets worse with overclocked RAM than with an overclocked CPU. Um, I do overclock the RAM a little, but not super aggressively like I would for a CPU. So this is Tim for Timmy Tech TV. Check out 
uh, part two of this video, which will be out in a day or two, um, if you're just watching this live. If not, it should already be up there for you to see. And we'll see you next time. Uh, please subscribe, guys, and please give it a thumbs up if you want to see more build videos. Uh, leave the kind of case you would like to see in the comments, and I'll do what I can to do a build in the cases you guys want to see. Again, so it's Tim for Timmy Tech TV. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.